Merrimack TV is committed to our community. From gavel to gavel coverage of town and school board meetings to updates on town services and projects, we aim to keep you connected. Uh, good morning, I'm Kyle Fox, Public Works Director for the Town of Merrimack. Hi, I'm Diane Trippett. I'm the Town Clerk Tax Collector for the Town of Merrimack. I'm Captain Matt Tarleton with the Merrimack New Hampshire Police Department. And keep the public informed of every motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And many moments, so you can be confident that we're here for you. Thanks for watching. Stay connected. Follow Merrimack TV on Facebook. Go around the board here. Yep. Tracy? Uh, Tracy McGraw, member. And did uh, you show up? Shannon. Shannon Barnes, school board liaison. Maureen. Maureen, senior. Advisor, how's that? <laughs> yeah, I like that. You are an advisor. <laughs> Michelle. Michelle Creswell, member and secretary. Thank you, Michelle. And is that it? No, there's Abby. Matt. Abby? Hold on one oh, second. Abby. Abby. I'm sorry, Abby. Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> um, Abby Cody, student representative. Thank you, Abby, very much. For and being. I see uh, Rick is connecting. Rick, can you hear us yet? Oh, not quite yet. Oh, That's Rick, okay. Can you hear us? If you, can you turn on, unmute yourself and identify yourself? Hi, I'm Richard Greenier. Hi, Rick. How are you? Hi, Rick. Evening, everyone. Sorry, Good. I'm late. And That's we right. have, and I'm Matt Casparius, Director of Parks and Recreation, and then we have two of our um, Eagle Scouts with us who had, have recently finished projects. who are going to tell us about their projects. Um, uh, David, do you want to unmute yourself and, and activate your video so we get in, in ah, introduce yourself? Thank you, Matt. Yeah, uh, my name is David Roy. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, today I'm going over my uh, Eagle project summary. Yep, I will give you, we'll do that in just one second. And uh, Michael? My name is Michael Clark. I'm happy to be here. Unfortunately, I don't have a camera. Okay. And I will also be going over my Eagle Scout summary. Well, nice to hear your voice. Thank you for joining us, Michael. Welcome, okay. both of you. Now we're good. Do we want to jump right to that report at this point, um, Matt? You can do the, the minutes, that's fine. Okay, all right, thank you so much. We'll keep moving on. Thank you for the introductions. That means we do have a quorum. Uh, do I have a, if you had a chance to read the minutes, um, I have, I, I could take a motion to accept the minutes from the uh, September, October meeting, sorry, October 21st meeting. So moved. Thank you, Christine, a second. I think that was Shannon, but I'll start. Right, it was Shannon. Yep. <laughs> My sister's name is Christine. I didn't. It didn't even phase me when you said that. <laughs> My mother used to do it all the time. <laughs> no worries. So we have a motion and a second from Christine. You got it. Accept the minutes of October. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very so, much. I um, didn't see. Hang I on. Wasn't here. We had some people off camera. Tracy, uh, you were not here, love, or I was here. You were. Shannon, yeah, you were not here. It was I Maureen wasn't. that wasn't here. I wasn't here. I, and, I was not here. And Abby, right. So Maureen, Shannon, and Abby um, are the three that are abstained. So it's going to be. I'm sorry. I, I was actually at the meeting. So I'm. You were? Okay, sorry. So, it's gonna, so for yes, it's Michelle, Christine, Laura, Tracy, and Rick, correct? And Shannon. Yep. <laughs> and correct. Maureen and Abby are abstained. Okay, thanks. Correct. I'll get it. Do we hear from Julie at all? Is she? We did and she's sick. Okay, thank you so much. All right, moving right along. So the minutes have been approved, right? We're good on that. Moving yeah. on, we mm -hmm. have, uh, we are skipping to old business because the new business is not here. Correct. And we have a report from, go ahead, Matt, would you like to all introduce? All right, so me? let's start with, um, David Roy, if you want to come on camera and unmute yourself and you can make your presentation. Uh, hello. Uh, is there any chance I could share my screen? I have some pictures. Uh, yep. Give me one second. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, any from Jay Haddad? 
Matt? Um, he should be here. Why does it not? Hold on one second. It's not. The, the button appears on my screen. I think if I click it, it might just work. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> try it. <laughs> Yep, there we go. Yeah. Hey, looking good. Look at David Roy right. has started. Perfect. Look at you, David. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, hello. My name is David Roy. Uh, thank you for having me again. Uh, I'd just like to uh, start as if uh, you have never heard the project before. So, I'll go straight from idea to completion. Perfect. So, it started out as an idea from O'Leary Basketball Camp. This camp is held at Washington Park at this upper basketball court right here in this picture. As you can see, there's a very large hill right next to the court. Um, this hill is an issue because when you mess up a dribble or you miss a shot, uh, the ball can go rolling down the hill and you have to chase after it for a while. Uh, this not only cuts back on time for basketball, uh, but it also provokes injuries as you could twist your ankle as you're running down uh, chasing after the ball. <laughs> so in the top right, uh, there's a picture of my first design that I created. Uh, I just like to talk about that. So it is removable. That's the first aspect. Uh, okay. I used a batting cage fencing because I thought that would be the best material to uh, have balls be hit up against repeatedly and not wear over time. It is five feet tall. And it has five sections with gaps in between. So these gaps are there because if the ball happens to go over or around, or for any reason you need to go through that area, uh, you can walk right through the gaps instead of having to go all the way around the fence. And it also still catches the balls because there's an overlap. Good. So uh, the first steps of this project uh, started out as approvals. So I needed to get approval from Mr. Kasparius. I talked to Mr. Kasparius. He made sure he was on board with it. Uh, we worked out some details. Then I went to you guys, the Parks and Rec. Right. Then I went to the town council and okay. then the DPW and dig safe to, make, to uh, mark out the area and make sure that that was a good place to dig. And then uh, I went to the Boy Scout council, which is the big one. Uh, these were all very quick and efficient meetings, and uh, they went well. Can I just ask you a quick question, please, David? When did yes, you start? Ahead. When did you start all this? So uh, right here, my first fundraiser, I believe, was on July. It was eleventh. Okay. I think July eleventh. Thank you. That That's all. My, that was my first date. Yep. So uh, fundraising. I had two car washes at the Gulf Gas Station. Um, they were a very big success. Uh, they raised about $1,700 and the first car wash was the hottest day of the year. It was a hundred degrees out. So that was uh, quite a struggle. And, but both his car washes were very successful and very lucrative. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so work day one was measuring and marking out, uh, where the holes need to be dug. Uh, as you can see in these little pictures, we got some measuring tapes and stuff. Um, this was, uh, was very encouraging to me this first, uh, work day because I had great attendance and a lot of the older boys showed up to, uh, help me out. And that just felt great because they were supporting me and, uh, it felt good to get something done finally after all the work of planning. Correct. Work day two was, uh, the DPW digging the holes with the DPW. So Lori Barrett, as well as a couple of, uh, men from, the DPW work crew came out with their auger on the back of a, a uh, trailer and uh, we dug 22 holes. Uh, it took about five hours and uh, two things that happened during uh, this time was that the auger actually broke twice. The oh, pin, oh, no. <laughs> pin that was holding uh, the arm connected to the uh, auger itself uh, snapped twice, but they actually had two replacements for it because apparently this happens a lot. So they just put that right back in. It wasn't a huge deal. And uh, also we hit lots of ledge. Every single hole being the granite <laughs> state, uh, we hit granite and or stumps or uh, tr uh, what's it called? Roots uh, at basically every hole. So the issue with this is that we would either need to rearrange the layout of where my poles would be because I want to make sure that the poles would be equidistant apart or we would just have to keep working at it and trying to uh, break up or, uh, take out the rock in the way or whatever it was. 
Wow. So workday three was cementing the ground uh, post sleeves. So as you know, this project, this uh, fence is removable. So we had to cement sleeves into the ground. Uh, this was a big learning process for me because before this time, I had no idea how much really went into cementing something into the ground. So uh, basically, there's a lot of layers to it. You first have to start with uh, gravel at the bottom. A certain amount of the hole needs to be gravel. And then after that, uh, you need to cement, put the item in that you're cementing. And when you pour in the cement, you got to make sure that item is level. So as you can see in the picture on the far left, there, that orange thing is a level. Once we would pour in the cement, we would make sure that that is uh, steady. Also, the second we got in the car to leave this uh, workday, it started pouring rain. So. Ah. Oh, jeez. Ah. Wow. So, uh, workday four, installing the nettings to the poles. So uh, before this workday, I had to custom order the netting from a uh, sports netting company. Once they arrived to my house, I had to take them out, unravel them, and measure them to make sure that they were the right length that we needed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then we measured all of them. We had five, as for the five sections of the fence. Uh, one of them was uh, a foot too long. So we basically proceeded with the workday that I had already planned, and we did four out of the five sections, finishing uh, very well. But uh, that caused for a fifth one. Just we had to wait for the uh, extra piece of netting to arrive. Okay. So yeah, here's workday five. Uh, this is just installing the last section. I just invited a couple of uh, my basketball friends to come and check out my fence and put in the last section of netting with me. And then after that, we played a game of basketball for the, uh, the first test run of the fence. Awesome. Wonderful. Perfect. Very nice. So I'd like to go over some challenges that I ran into. Uh, I mentioned a couple of them. Uh, so the first is that the auger broke. Like I said, this was a slight delay, but luckily uh, these guys that helped me out really knew what they were doing. So they just put that uh, pin right back in there and we were ready to go. Uh, the next one is that we ran into a lot of ledge. So yeah. uh, this was probably one of the most stressful challenges because I really needed to uh, – on the spot, remake uh, my kind of diagram of what I wanted the fence to look like, make sure it was still pleasing to the eye and uh, equidistant. And then finally, the netting was uh, ordered too long or it was delivered too long. So that delayed us a couple of weeks, but uh, or just two weeks, but it wasn't a big deal in the end. We got it done. Yeah. Good. A lot of detail. Good job. A lot of yep. detail. Uh, so I'd like to, I got a lot of f positive feedback already of users of the court. Uh, some of them being uh, my friends that, that the first day when we bas uh, played some basketball, everybody was super excited for it. You know, all my friends like to go to the O'Leary camp with me. So they're like, wow, this is going to be such a good um, addition. Uh, also, true. Merrimack Travel Basketball actually held their tryout at the court with my fence because of COVID. So they couldn't go inside. So they had to hold an outdoor tryout and uh, they loved the fence. It was a very, uh, helpful necessity for uh, them. And because of COVID, they had to use it. So excellent. And, uh, yeah. And so finally, uh, Parks and Rec, you guys actually posted uh, a picture of my project uh, thanking me. And there was tons of comments saying, you know, this is such a great idea. Thank you for your hard work and uh, stuff like their kids uh, have been to the camp and they're like, wow, this would be a great uh, addition. I wish when my kid was there, this was here. Good. So yeah, well, uh, thank you. here are just some final pictures here. Uh, it's pretty hard fence to see from far back. So all these are pretty close up, but uh, here's the finished product. Sweet. Looks awesome. Very yeah. well presented, Dave. Um, very yes. well presented. So uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it's great to uh, do this little summary meeting and thank you for the opportunity to do the actual project. I had to go through you and get your approval before I started any of this. And uh, it was a great experience and I had very much fun. And uh, yeah, so thank you. Thank uh, you. Does anybody have any questions, comments or uh, feedback? Dave, well, congratulations. I'm sorry, go ahead, Rick. Thanks, just one, Dave. First of all, thank you. Uh, secondly, um, although the adversity was probably um, a bit of a pain at the time, uh, it sounds like you learned quite a bit in the process. And um, I think that's uh, maybe 
the best part of this whole project besides the awesome fence. <laughs> yeah, of course. I learned so much. You know, greatest thing I learned with all the issues and challenges is that uh, when it comes to a project or really anything, nothing comes out the exact way that you want it to. And um, you always have to make changes on the fly. So. Right. Excellent. And I just want to say it shows you how to process all progress and all this with community. It, it's, it starts with volunteerism and good ideas. And uh, this committee is wonderful for that. You know, just we're always open to good ideas. So thank you for all your efforts. Anybody yeah. else have any yeah. comment? Anybody else? I just want to say thank you, David. It looks amazing. Yeah. yeah thank good, you job. Too, David. good job. Good job. All right. Thank you so much for coming, David. And uh, I appreciate that. And uh, hopefully next year we'll, <laughs> everybody can hear what it. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving on to Michael then. Do we have Michael still, Matt? But Mike is here as, as well as Jay. So perfect. Why don't we, Jay was technically first on the agenda. So okay. why don't we okay. go okay. to. So Jay yeah. is there. Excellent. Thank you. I miss, I'm sorry. Thank you, Jay. Good evening. How are you doing? Mr. Haddad. Can you hear me? We can. Do you have a video okay. or no? Um, so I'm unfortunately not as prepared as David. I had some pictures to show, but something came up and I'm connecting to this through my phone right now. Okay. So sorry, sorry about that. I don't have any visual aids. No worries. Um, so I guess um, I can just start off with saying what my project was. Um, so we had taken this, um, I don't know if I'm, when I present to my project, I think everyone that's in this call was there. Um, yes. So there was this lifeguard shack. Uh, it had been out of use for what I originally thought was three years, but turns out it had been out of use for 10 years when we had started working on it. And who <laughs> knows how long it had been sitting there by the time we got to it. So we started off um, the goal of the, the main goal of this project was to make it, give it a use again. So it's not just some bulk storage that we can just, that it just, things get thrown in there when they're done being used. <laughs> so we yep. wanted to turn this into so we wanted to turn this into um a changing stalls for the waterfront at the park um so the the main goal was to put in as mu as many stalls as we could as well as uh repair the bathroom put in get running water going through there again and just overall make the make the cabin look nice again and, so, I, and, I, and I believe that matt did you provide us with pictures last time or a while did, ago yes yeah, so we have seen updated pictures, Jay. Okay, yeah, I believe um, on the on the Parks and Rec Facebook page, some pictures were put there as well. Okay, perfect. So, so the project, um, I'd like to say it went smooth, but that would be an utter lie. Um, <laughs> it, would, it was projected to go very well, but then, as we all know, this year's not been no. quite normal. <laughs> so by the time we actually started working on it and fundraising it, I had about two months left uh, to complete the project. Yes. So um, we still did end up getting it finished, though. Uh, so it, no bad news coming for me today. But we ended up finishing up the project by installing six stalls, two of which are handicapped slash family stalls, which are probably two or three times larger than the normal ones. Uh -huh. Each stall comes with a bench that can support, a, I don't know the exact amount, but a a decent amount of weight so there's no worry about benches breaking um we retiled the bathroom floor as well as put in a, a new toilet and sink and a new Great. mirror as well and we repainted all the walls added locks to all the doors and just made it a functioning just just gave it a, a use good mm -hmm. beautiful and when did you start when did you finish up and when did you kind of start this kick this off so I roughly started the actual construction in early September. Okay. And then I finished it about a month later in early October. And then I turned in my all my paperwork and all the all my fundraising receipts in a few days before my birthday. So <laughs> And what did you do for fundraising, if I might ask? Oh yeah, sorry about that. Um so before we started the project, uh we we I had I only had to do one car wash. It was we had a huge turnout. It was very successful. I'm very thankful for everyone that volunteered to help me on that. Um, we ended up raising almost all the money that we needed from that one car wash. That la wow. It was a pretty nice day as well. And then just a few donations from family members gave us the rest Great. that we needed. Good. 
Congratulations. Good. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, you too. Uh, sorry that I couldn't come equipped with uh, be a better presentation. Uh, Matt, Matt's posting them right now for I, us. I just reshared the, the photos um, from the interior. So this is the interior hallway. Yeah. Um, so it's two stalls to the left, two to the right, and then two straight ahead in the back. Um, and then this is one of the individual stalls, um, one of the bigger stalls that are made uh, nice. in there. Can I just ask Jay what year you're in, Jay? Uh, in what school? Year? Yeah. I'm currently a senior in school. <laughs> Thank you very much, young man. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Say hi to your family. Uh, All right. Hello. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments for Jay before... Okay. Well, thank you so much for doing that. It's awesome. Right, thank you for having me. Yeah. Take care. Are we ready to move on with Michael at this point? Any yep. comments? Okay. Am I talking too much? Like you could tell me. <laughs> She's <laughs> away. All right, Michael. Uh, hello. There it is. Good, Good job. My name is. Michael Clark. I uh, just want to make sure. Can everyone see my presentation yes. all right? Everyone's yes. Good job. Yeah. So my project was an informational kiosk for the Doc Parker Wasserman. This was the initial uh, drawing, or rather 3D model that I had of it. And on either side, you can see my two German shepherds. <laughs> Cute. So this is my original schedule. As you can see, there's the completion dates for the first couple okay. items there. And then obviously in the early parts of 2020 we hit the great roadblock of covid mm -hmm. but moving on here <laughs> was the original the original site before the kiosk was in it this is for those who might not know to the left of the main entrance for the dog park over at wasserman mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. after fundraising was complete there was a bit of time in between as I got the last of the funds together, unable to do traditional fundraising. I had to reach out to friends and family and find some other means. But eventually I got to the point of being able to buy all my needed materials. To the left, you can see uh, them all being painted. And to the right is the fully assembled kiosk. If you notice in that picture, one of the problems that I came across while putting it together was the acrylic cracking. There's about a five inch crack in the top right corner. So I had to learn how to bond acrylic together. <laughs> Okay. That's okay. <laughs> Following that, uh, dug out the holes. Unlike David, I only had two rather than the 21. So <laughs> that went a lot more smooth. A lot of holes. Uh, at, this was approaching into October when this actually got on the ground and it was getting dark much earlier than expected. So a evening work day became a more of a nighttime work day but we did get the initial frame into the ground and fully cemented in it sat there without the roof for about a day or two just to fully solidify and then one work day later we were able to get the roof up get the back panel in put on the green tin roofing and it was complete just have a couple more angles and shots of that uh, and if you see Thank you. If any of you have seen the kiosk in the last few days, you may have noticed that uh, the inner cork lining, a piece has fallen off, as obviously during one of the first co colder nights that it went through, the glue that was being used did not stand up. So in the next coming days, I'll be back there just fully securing those cork panels in in a much more uh, suitable fashion. Okay. Very nicely said. Good. And that's, that's all okay. I have for you. Any questions? Great. Um, just another, I don't know why I do this. What year are you in, Michael? Are you also? I am a senior, yes. Okay. Was David also a senior? Uh, no, yeah. I believe he's a sophomore. Okay. All right. I just. Don't quote me I, on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I'm a former, a retired teacher from Merrimack. And I had Jay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all from 424. Well, thank you. That it looks great and it's certainly necessary. And it's nice to see so many scouts from a, tr a particular troop, <laughs> but it, it's been very helpful at the park. Any comments or questions for Mike? Mike, um, yeah, hi, this is Tracy. You did a great job with this. We had been talking about getting something at the dog park like this for a long time, and now we're just trying to figure out the best way to, to um, organize the information that we're gonna put in there. 
Um, but this thing is absolutely amazing, and it looks so complimentary to the other side, the other kiosk that's on the other side that has the names of different sponsors and everything. So you really did a great job of, of making this look good, and I just wanted to thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Anybody else? Absolutely. I'll second that. This is Christine. Nice second what Tracy said. It looks fantastic. It's a great addition. And I'm sure Matt has a whole bunch of stuff he's going to be able to print and post in there. There's a couple of things in there already. Excellent. Great. Well done, Mike. Thanks. I'm glad to have been able to help, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity that you all provided. Well, congratulations. Good job. Senior year. <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Moving on. The accent, the accessible ramp is another project project in the works. What do you think about that, Matt? It is in the works. He, um, we don't have that presentation tonight. He'll be done oh, yeah. probably in the next week or two. Um, okay. They've got the, um, he's got the main part of the deck built and installed. He's just got to do the ramp piece now. So um, he's been out there every weekend uh, for the last couple of weeks. So great. As long as the weather holds, he should be finishing fairly soon, and hopefully we'll get a report in when we meet in December. Great. Thank you. I, I was reading from the minutes now. So how's what Watson Park? I drove by the fence. looks nice. Yeah, so Watson Park fence is 99% done. The only thing that's left to go in, which is happening tomorrow, is uh, the, the main gate. And it's basically it's an access gate for town use if we need to get down to the river for whatever um, yeah. emergencies or whatnot um, but the plan is that it will be a locked gate um, and again we do want to just give kudos to the Mr. Fence guy of Merrimack yeah, um, yeah. He, he did the project for cost so he didn't charge us labor um, so it was you know $13,000 instead of $25,000 so amazing um, so glad to get that that item off our list yeah, good job. I, I, I like the black, too. I don't know why. <laughs> well, it looks like it belongs there, you know. It blends yeah. in. Yeah, but. kind of. Great. And how are we doing with the uh, beachfront? If you want to just go the, ahead with the agenda. The, the beachfront is moving. It's um, <laughs> slow. De slowly. Um, certainly not going to be done in September like it was supposed to be done. Um, DES has been working from home since COVID right. began. And they go into their office once a week to get the mail. And so anytime we have a meeting with them virtually, um, they go, oh, well, we need you to update this drawing for this, but you have to mail it and you can't email it because we need a full size plans and whatnot. And oh. then you have to wait a week for them to go into the office to get their mail, and then another week to get the it, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they're, they are doing their final sign off soon but apparently we've learned it also has to go to the governor's executive council um oh, which i didn't we weren't expecting um and i'm waiting to hear when that's going to happen but at this point considering it's almost december um <laughs> i don't think we're going to get it done this fall anyway so we're probably looking at a spring um right. spring insulation at this point so uh, but we're still plugging away um, yeah Thank you. That's it, it, that's not the only department that that all these things are. The slowdowns are happening everywhere. Right. Great. And uh, Christine, did you want to speak about the dog park? Thank you, Matt. I Kirsten. certainly could. Um, I do not have the uh, agenda list here, Tracy. If you have that, or Matt, yep. that'd be great. Um, I haven't been able to get out there in a while. I think, Matt, you had noted that the chips that were delivered uh, earlier in the week, last week, have been now spread. Yes. Is that true? Yep. yep. So Great. that was our big thing. I don't know how far um, cleanup had gone because I can't get down there as well. Um, but maybe, Tracy, have you been there in the last week or so with TJ or anything? Uh, I have stopped over there to see what was going on. There's been some people over there, but as expected, the biggest problem that we had was the um, um, the lack of volunteers to come and clean up um, doggy duty. 
Um, It apparently is not at the high point of people's day, which I can understand completely. Um, But if there's anybody out there that likes to use the dog park, we could still use some help before we really get racked in with some winter snow. And um, hopefully we can get more people out there and we're all doing our social distancing and we're all trying to be as careful as we possibly can. But we really want to get our dog park in good working order before the snow is really hit and stick. Correct. Absolutely. It makes it safer for all the dogs out there, folks. And I know a lot of families like to bring their young ones to the dog park, which is great if you're doing that and you're supervising properly appropriately but little ones also sit on the ground they walk around they pick things up and we all know what happens in the dog park so it's very important that we try to uh, do some maintenance as far as cleaning up all the miscellaneous poop that may have been overlooked or broken toys that could be picked up or eaten so it's for it's for everybody's safety so the more volunteers we can have going out and doing that it's just so much beneficial for everybody thank you um anything else matt or uh, i, no, I no. noticed the ba- the balance was seventeen hundred sixty two dollars and fifty nine cents yep so it's whittling down a little bit um mm-hmm. but it's obviously challenging to do any kind of fundraisers or whatnot at this point in time. So yeah, yeah. Um, if we end up doing a spring cleanup, that'll be another thousand dollars, you know. Um, so we'll be down into not much money left. But hopefully by next summer, you know, we'll be able to right do something again with that with fundraising. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's been quite a year. Um, Laura. Yeah. Shannon, yes. Hi, hi. Uh, a question to Matt. Um, I think you just hit on something. Um, there's great usage of the dog park. It's probably one of the uh, more used assets amongst the parks around the town. And I know it's budget season coming up. Uh, so I know you've been preparing for that. Knowing that fundraisers can't happen, is there any opportunity to get some operating budget allocated to maintaining or um, modifying or just, just keeping the dog park oh, yeah. usable and safe? We can try, um, but um, we were told basically to level fund our budgets unless it was critical, and and so I'm not sure how well that's going to. Well, I just I just heard safety issues, and so with that, you know, safety yeah. would I would say, you know, that that's where I look at that as critical. Mm-hmm. So, and you know, that that'd be my argument to make if I were to make it. But uh, but with that, I know that the. You know, it's also not safe to, to do fundraisers right now. So, you know, I I would hate to see that park not be able to be leveraged to its fullest capacity because I think it is a, a, a tre- it's treasure by our community and, you know, yes. it's it's still in its young age. So just something to consider, but I, I'm sure that there are probably people at the table right now that would also be very supportive of seeing some support, I'm not saying a lot of money, but some support for the dog park so that it doesn't all have to be fundraised. And officially right now, there is no funding specifically for the dog park. There's a Wasserman Park maintenance account. Well, right. Yeah, realistically, it's a Wasserman Park maintenance account plus whatever carry all of there's a little bit from that account that also covers when we replace the panels at the skate park. Um, we just had to replace the ice rink, ice skating rink liner, you know, that comes out of that same fund, but it never seemed to increase the budget for oh. at, uh Right. So sometimes we can find it and sometimes we can't, you know. Um, huh. Can I ask a question? Please. Uh, why are people so lax about not picking up their own dog's poop? I, yeah, I, I thought that was just one of those things you just, you automatically do. Yeah, I don't understand why it's left there. Yeah, that's pretty, right. That's Maureen, exactly. we've asked the same question, but I have to admit, and I think Christine would say the same, that there have been times when we're there at the dog park, um, usually during the warmer weather, and people tend to speak to each other, and yeah, they're not yeah. always paying attention to their dogs or where their dogs are going. We Correct. know that there are certain areas of the dog parks that the dogs like to use as their restrooms, shall we say? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've also seen people just standing there and actually watching them 
and not taking care of the business afterwards. Like, yeah. And so it's a matter sometimes of if you're there and you've got the wherewithal to do it, you step up and you tell them, hey, listen, you know, we need to, we need to work together. Please go pick up your dog's business. Yeah. Well, do they, they have to realize too, that some dogs do have worms and stuff or something going on and their dog brings it home on their paws and they wash it and they wonder why their dog is sick. Yeah. I, I just don't understand. I mean, you know, we have a neighborhood that so many dogs we're out there picking their dog poop up too, but I, yep. I just can't imagine what, what is wrong. It just drives me crazy. And I know my neighbor had an altercation with a, a mean dog last week and uh, went after her, the puppy's ears. It, you know, he's got a brand new puppy. Oh. And I said, what happened? He said, Nothing. He just said, you know, too bad. Cause he said that dog shouldn't be in there. He's just mean. He kept yeah. going after the puppy, had him by the throat and everything. So, yeah. Well, so what do you, in, you know, in you know. cases like that, one of the things that we have also recommended for people when they've got a problem with a dog that's in there, there's two different, there's two different sections. There's one for dogs that are small dogs. And I believe Chris, that's 30 pounds and under. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about 30, uh, 25 okay, pounds. And, and then you have the larger dog one. You have a lot of small dogs that deal well with large dogs. Yeah. Um, well, these dogs and, are the same size because the puppy is a big puppy. And but his, oh, yeah, so, but, his ear actually got ripped by the dog. And I would have said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when something like that happens, most people will work together to make sure that the dog is okay, exchange right. information, sometimes right. even, you know, chip in for vet bills and so forth. Yeah. But um, when all else fails, 911. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell um, him. I think he's thanks. going back. I think he's going to stay in his own yard. <laughs> And that's right. too bad because it's a really good dog park and there's really good people that go there. For the most part, nothing's perfect no matter where you go. There's always right. going to be an issue that we have to deal with. And we have a wonderful police force. We have a wonderful uh, canine officer who will come yeah. out there when there's an issue. There's other police officers who will come out with if there's an issue. But it's not something that happens very often. And, right. and it, that's a good thing. Yeah, that's good. I think we need to encourage friends to to be more respectful that way. Yes. All right. Keep. I think we're going to keep going here, Matt. Are you ready for your mm-hmm. budget update? And thank you, Shannon, for those ideas about the budget. That's important stuff. Yep. And and um, as I as I started to say, you know, you know, we were told this year basically to level fund it, and and. So far, from what I've heard, you know, we're not expecting any cuts, but I, I would be surprised to get any real increases this year, um, just because of all that's going on. But one of the things that we did do, um, based on the problems that we had this past year with kind of Wasman Park, Watson Park, with the river, um, and to a lesser extent, Wildcat Falls, um, because we are renovating the beach and we're expecting that that will draw more people to the beach next summer. Um, we have, we are pushing for, um, to restore weekend lifeguard coverage at Wasman park beach this year. Um, hasn't been guards there in 10 years. Wow. Um, and at least 10 years, that's as far back as I can yeah. find. I've, it, but, um, and so, you know, we know that we need two people on and basically at all times in order to enforce Merrimack's um, residents only um, access of the beach. Um, and so what we're looking at is, you know, the park attendant out in the parking lot covering that, that and then lifeguards, um, you know, protecting the water. And we talk about safety issues. This is a big one. And it has been with me for since I got here, which is it's a waterfront you know, there's far greater risks of anything to, of, of anything we do, um, there's a significant risk of, um, you know, injuries and, you know, those types of things. Um, I have no idea how well it's going to be received. You know, we'll find out in, in December and January, but um, we're looking at basically weekend coverage, uh, probably 11 to 7 um and then as well as the you know as i said the park attendant on covering the parking lot um and then we're also looking to expand 
the weekday coverage, and this is a problem that started happening in August, is we were getting a lot of people coming down at night, you know, six, seven o'clock at night after work and partying till nine, 10 o'clock at night. Um, so we're trying to provide some coverage for some of that. Um, I've been able to rework the existing budget and kind of spread out what in the past, for the last five years, the town has subsidized part of the lifeguard coverage um, for weekdays, but um, they're going to cover kind of the, the, that, that same amount of money we'll use to cover the uh, part of the weekends as well. Um, and then um, we're adding basically only a, an extra half a position to what, what the town has funded in the past. So hopefully they'll be supportive of, of that. You know, we'll find out when we get to the, the budget in January, um, um, whenever that presentation happens, but the rest of our budget realistically is large is largely unchanged at this point because again we were directed not to um, unless it was something really urgent um, and again lifeguards is is one that's been a problem for several years now and 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 again with the pending change and improvements coming we're expecting it to get a little, a even worse and realistically COVID's not going to be gone by next summer. Uh, even if the vaccines are out, yeah, you know, right. not everybody's going to take them. It's yep. going to take a while for distribution. You know, I'm expecting with summer camps, assuming I'm allowed to run summer camps, okay. that that um, that um, there's still going to be social distancing and masks and those kinds of things are still going to exist next summer. Um, so we'll wait and see. And as far as summer camp goes, um, we're, again, we're hopeful to for for Nanticoke to run next summer. Um, we're working. I'm working right now. I sit on the executive board for both the New Hampshire Camp Directors Association and the uh, New Hampshire Rec and Park Association, and we've been working already on working with DHHS to get the regs updated. You know, like they've already made changes for the childcare regs that that changed it from groups of ten to groups of twenty, and so we're trying to get even that change alone. Right. Solves 90% of our problems that we had last summer that didn't allow us to operate because it was just financially wasn't feasible with a group of, you know, eight kids with two staff, you know. Um, so we're working on that now. Um, hopefully, so hopefully by the time we get to January, we'll be able to open camp registration. We do expect camp register camp is going to cost more next year. Um, it's probably going to go up 10 or $15. Um, just again, depending on, on, um, how the, the regulations shake out um yeah. but that's what we're anticipating just if, you know and it's not going to be us i mean we're fortunately we've always been kind of on the lower side from the other camps in the area um so yes even though we'll go up 15 dollars, so is everybody else so um we'll still probably be on the low side um so that's all i got on the budget at this point um well we, thank you I, it's still crazy <laughs> yeah. so moving on to programs so um, a few weeks ago we had our annual halloween party um we had made 300 free tickets available we ended up with 217 people showing up um and a special thank you to tracy and rick for coming to, to help us that day um yeah. overall the event went pretty well although we were disappointed that you know 83 people didn't show up that had tickets um so because it felt a little vacant you know you'd have these big gaps because it was it was like clumps of families at a times that decided not to show up yeah, that's true. where we couldn't we couldn't necessarily like go on facebook and say hey there's space open now right and 100 people show up you know um but people felt safe people seemed to enjoy it they missed kind of the the usual excitement of the event as it's usually held um but you know, it, it went over, it went fairly well as far as things concerned, you know, presumably, you know, we're looking at the same kind of model for winter carnival in February, um, based on, um, the number of people that didn't show up, I'm thinking we can increase to have more than 300 people. Um, but I have to think about what that number is. Is it four? Is it five? I'm not sure yet. Um, but we're also looking at, instead of having the, the walk go all the way down the hill and come back up again, going out on the field past the playground and around in a big circle with still kind of predefined walking paths because um, the trekking the back up the hill was slow for some people. So if we make it at least a flat walk, that'll solve some of the, the uh, 
spacing issues that you know um, yeah. and the gaps because it won't take them as long to progress through. So, did you have Matt, a question, Shannon? I do. Um, do we have record of those eighty-three tickets that weren't used? So that you know, if there's a again, we do a ticketed event that maybe um, those who are put on a waiting list will get preference over those who didn't use them. Yep. Yes. Great. Thank good you. question. That is a good question, but yes. Um, so, like so, I said, I, I think we're probably in looking at that model for Winter Carnival. I haven't started planning that one yet. Um, a lot of it's really going to depend on how COVID goes in the next month. Um, and, and uh, you know, yeah. we'll see. Um, our So, moving on, our next event, our next big event. Well, we've got an event this weekend, which is our turkey scavenger hunt. Um, this is something we've been doing for four years now, and we basically hide um, cutouts of 11 turkey, turkey shaped cutouts all over town on this coming Saturday. Um, we have, um, and the people have to figure out the clues to figure out where they are. And then the first three families that get back to Wasserman Park after finding all the clues wins a, an 18 pound turkey for Thanksgiving. So um, we've actually got 25 families registered so far for this year. Usually we're around 15 or 16. So we're oh, I think people are looking for, you know, again, it's a $5 for family. So it's a nice low cost event. If anybody's listening and wants to still register, there is time. Um, you know, usually in most years they, they stamp a card when they get to each turkey, but this year we did a, um, we're putting um, random letters on the on the bottom of the clue, and when they get all the letters assembled, they have to unscramble it to figure out whatever the what the Thanksgiving message is that we've created. Um, just make, so they're, they're not picking up a stamp and sharing the stamp, and you know, um, right, right. So that kind of thing. So um, should be good. Weather looks good for Saturday. Um, yep. Our next event, and I'm going to share my screen here in one second. Um, is our holiday happenings event. Can everybody see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, You've done a good job doing all this so far. So Thank you. our normally the first Sunday in December is our holiday happenings event, which typically includes the um, holiday parade, the tree lighting, and for the last couple of years, our candy cane hunt. Um, can't quite do that in our normal fashion this year. So things are going to look a little bit different. Um, it, um, but we are still doing activities. So the first thing we're doing is what we're calling is Santa's Merrimack holiday tour. Um, so Santa and Mrs. Claus are going to be traveling throughout town with the Merrimack fire department and one of their fire department vehicles. Um, and they will travel to various points within town. Um, so that people can socially distance and wave to Santa as he goes by. Um, if you, as you see in the flyer here, uh, we have pre-assigned times of where we, assuming you know no major traffic delays. Um, so, for example, the, they'll be at the high school parking lot uh, at 2:45, and they'll go down Elgar Drive. They'll go up to the middle school, then they'll head to Reed's Ferry. So they'll go into each of the parking lots and stay for a couple of minutes and wave and say hello and that kind of thing, and then move on to the next location. Um, as they travel, um, through the, through the route, it's, we expect it's going to take about an hour and 15 minutes. We are still technically going to do a tree lighting, but it is going to be in a very abbreviated tree lighting. Um, probably only about 15 minutes this year, instead of the normal 45 minutes to, uh, to an hour. Um, essentially, um, uh, Santa and Mrs. Claus will come down, they'll do our countdown, which, you know, our plan is to record this so we can, you know, probably do Facebook live or something. Um, but do our countdown, turn on the lights. Um, we have, uh, Broadway bound is going to do kind of a socially distanced, um, dance performance out front and there'll be in a nice, uh, roped off area away from any crowd, you know, um, and then if they're still available, the, the high school band um, is going to send us a portion of the band um, to do a couple of songs. Their, their availability is going to be dependent on if they're still in remote learning in two weeks or not. If they're not, then they're not available. Um, but if they are, then they'll be able to send us a, a small contingent. And again, they'll have their own roped off section in the park. Um, realistically, we're encouraging people to go see Santa 
on his tour of town versus coming to Abbey Griffin Park this year. Um, we will, but anybody that does show up, we will be socially distanced. They will have to wear masks in the park, even though we're outdoors. Um, and, and um, you know, again, it's going to be a very quick event, probably 10 or 15 minutes um, at best. There won't be photos this year. There won't be, um, there won't be food or any of the, some of the other things. There won't be, um, um, you know, coming up and sitting on the stage while Mrs. Claus reads, reads Night Before Christmas, those kinds of things. So, um, again, just an abbreviated event for, for that this year. Um, stop sharing that. So that's our first holiday event. Um, our second holiday event is one that we do um, every year. Um, which is our Santa calling program. Um, and this is something we've done for a number of years, uh, particularly with the police department, but we have also had help from the library as, as well as, you know, staff here at Parks and Rec. Um, but basically they get a phone call from Santa Claus or Mrs. Claus. Um, we have uh, 55 children currently scheduled to get phone calls. Um, wow. Enter Mrs. Claus, the, 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 uh, 8th or 9th of December, those two evenings. Um, we're still trying to recruit a few more volunteers um, from police, fire, DPW, uh, town hall, wherever, um, to make those calls. We, we, we don't, we don't, tr we try not, we deliberately don't take general volunteers from the public just because we don't want to be giving out personal phone numbers to Correct. anybody, you know. Um, so, you know, if we get more volunteers, then we'll be able to take more than 58 kids right now. However, we are sold out. Um, it is a free program and one that's always been very popular, but um, 55 is kind of what we can manage with the volunteers that we have at this point. So, um, so that program is ongoing. Um, our, our next new program is our holiday food drive which is going to be Saturday, December 12th. So it's going to be a busy week for us. Uh, <laughs> 12 to 2 p.m. It's going to be at Town Hall and it is a drive-through food drive. So um, <laughs> so this year, more than most, obviously, um, there's, a, there's a need for food. Um, and so we're going to have um, special guests with Santa Claus. So we'll be out front of Town Hall um, out on the sidewalk, um, Santa will be you know, kind of waving and taking picture, or not or waving and saying hello to everybody. Um, we're, we've partnered up with uh, Macaroni Kid, which is a local kind of parent newsletter. Um, and one of the things that we're doing is we're encouraging people to deck out their car for their holidays. And oh. we're going to, um, and this is uh, Macaroni Kid's portion, um, we're going to take pictures of all the decorated cars, and then there's going to be an, an online uh, photo contest and the winning family will get a prize pack that includes like um, a restaurant gift certificates. I think it's tickets to Legoland, tickets to Altitudes and some other local businesses. So, um, so again, did, why, you know, so an incentive maybe to decorate your car, but also an incentive to come and donate um, during that day. We'll have music playing um, we're probably going to give away hot chocolate that day as well. And again, nobody's getting out of their car. So things will just get, you know, food will get passed out the window kind of thing and, and elves will collect it and, and put it in boxes. And, and uh, so we'll be there from 12 to two. Um, and yeah, like I said, $50 gift certificate to a restaurant of their choice, uh, Legoland passes and then the altitude passes. So um, some nice, nice prizes just as an added, added bonus. Um, Great. Cool idea. So, um, so that's our second event that week, um, or third event, really. Um, and then the other event that we're working on, and where is my flyer? Um, and zoom out here. So there is a collaboration going on among eight towns here in Southern New Hampshire, um, encouraging people to decorate their houses for the holidays. Um, and then to sign up to be on our official tour of lights. And what we're going to do is we're, we're taking registrations now for people that, you know, if you go and decorate your house, let us know, sign up your house to be on the list. Um, 
once uh, between now and December 6th, and then the eight towns will work together, and we're going to come up with basically a one-page master list of all the eight towns with the addresses and say, here's any homes that have Great. decorated, go check it out, you know, just, uh, and it's going to run Great. for three weeks in December. Um, we'll, we'll, we will release the list on December 11th, and, you know, we've asked homeowners to um, keep their lights on through December 27th. So it's so, you know, we don't have everybody all balled up into one you know weekend and traffic and that kind of thing. But just a free, fun family activity um, for the families. Each town that's participating um, is giving away a um, is raffling off a twenty five dollar gift certificate to a local restaurant to the homeowner. So um, in our case, it's going to be in Merrimack's case. Um, it will be a random drawing um, of the homeowners um, and one will win a gift certificate and we'll decide, we'll ask them which restaurant they want and then we'll go out and buy it. Um, Great. So we've, got, we've got a couple of homes signed up here in Merrimack so far, um, but obviously looking for more because the, obviously the more ta- more homes between all the towns, the better it becomes. But it's uh, Amherst, Antrim, Fitzwilliam, Jaffrey, Merrimack, Milford, Peterborough, and Ridge. So nice. uh, families can kind of make a night of it or a couple of nights of it to go and check all these addresses out. So um, Great. something kind of new and different. Um, well, you keep them coming. That's for and, sure. And we try. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and we are doing a, another blood drive. I'll talk about that more at, in, at our December meeting, but um, we do have a blood drive coming up on December 23rd. So um that's all I got. That's that's a good job. <laughs> considering <laughs> considering all the hurdles we keep getting. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling it too. Uh, any other updates or are you running a vacation week program also? We are running a school vacation week program. Um I didn't bring that that flyer Sorry, it's on the agenda. Uh, I don't have that flyer handy, but um, we are running a school vacation week the uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday um, after Christmas. Um, it'll be a small program, 16 kids maximum, which will be split into two groups of eight. Um, it'll be um, sports games, arts and crafts, um, a lot of outdoor time, obviously. Um, COVID pro- protocols will be in place. So, you know, we're indoors and masks will be required, um, right. but it's $40 a day. Um, and if they have siblings, the, the second child in the family or third or fourth or whatnot um, pays $5 less. So first child is 40, second child is 35, you know. Gotcha. Okay, um, good. So um, good. like I said, spots are limited this year for the program just uh, to keep our group size small. Um, but uh, it's usually a program that sells out most every year. So. Oh, I know, I know. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Any other any comments or questions from Matt? Or are we good? All right. Moving right along. Welcome, Maureen. Yes. How are you? <laughs> Anything to report? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nothing. The seniors are still not doing any meetings uh, because yeah. of COVID. Uh, there's no way we can keep that facility clean and open because it's so it's really small and you can't you can't have like 80 people walk up and only let 20 people in you know it's like crazy so but in the meantime uh there were steve is working on redoing the kitchen floor and the bathrooms are going to be brand new so at the end of this when our meeting start we'll have a super duper place to go visit (laughs) absolutely well, keep the least, faith. Uh, hopefully, the- all the seniors will be around because they're dropping like flies. <laughs> uh, don't say that yet. <laughs> but uh, uh, and and by the time this all ends, I'll be over there visiting you guys. <laughs> I, I'm ready yeah. to join. <laughs> yeah, we have a blood drive at John O'Leary. I think it's uh, December seventh. I'm not positive. It's on my calendar in back of me. But we do have a blood drive coming up. So at our place. So. They, they, they're they able to do that anyway, so. Sure. Well, that's good news. Thank yeah. you so much. Hi, Abby. How you doing, hon? Good. How are you? Fine, thank you. Fine, thank you, hon. Mm-hmm. Been busy. <laughs> yeah. That's why I sure you know. Yeah, I call it. Dan, Danica Patrick is sleeping over here, so that black cat in your oh. neighborhood is not mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, yeah. All right. Um, there's not too much going on right now, um, but the 
first quarter has just ended and we are going to be continuing into the second quarter still doing hybrid mm -hmm. which is good <laughs> um sorry parent teacher conferences are tomorrow on um, thursday and those i believe are scheduled in advance so that is happening and next week we have thanksgiving break the 25th to the through the 27th so time off school which is enjoy yay. yeah enjoy yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a lot yeah. it's a lot of work out there you're doing a good job though abby and thank, thank you, you for always doing this um <laughs> are the parent teacher conferences virtual or can people go into the building or um i would i can double check that now but i'm pretty sure yeah. they'll offer both okay um, yeah. probably Probably. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, because yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's okay. <laughs> Everything's different. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy thank you for being here. Any questions for Abby or any other comments? Okay, thank you, Sweeney. Here, thanks for being here. All right, Mr. Greenier, hello. Thank you, Mrs. Jaynes. Um, I can speak for a moment on behalf of the upper elementary, saying that our conferences were virtual. Um, okay. We completed them last week. Okay. Um, yeah, then, then I'd bet the high schools are too. I think you're probably right, Abby. It's okay. We uh, recently wrapped up our softball season, our um, baseball season, soccer, as well as football. And uh, again, um, I'd like to publicly thank Sweet Ginger Restaurant for uh, sponsoring the new scoreboard at our football field in yeah, Veterans I saw, Park. I saw that. Uh, very generous. Um, Lacrosse will be opening up their registration soon for the spring season. And uh, basketball and wrestling are still awaiting word from the school district as to whether any indoor space will be available during this COVID season. Um, huh. And finally, um, if parents are looking for more information, they can find it at the Merrimack Youth Association.com. And a thank you to the Department of Public Works for all their support keeping our fields uh, up and running great thank you that's You're excellent and um hello shannon hello school. how are you doing <laughs> okay uh yeah. so we have our school board meeting last night and we are going to be having an emergency meeting on thursday at 7 30 uh, okay. to discuss uh school district operations um between now and martin luther king uh, okay. junior day in january so I think there's more to come on everything. Uh, so with that, um, it's been a school year um, for the for the books uh, so far. I think Abby uh, covered it pretty pretty accurately. Who um, knows? <laughs> but honestly, I think everyone's giving their best effort. Students, yeah. families, parents, uh, staff. Oh my gosh, staff, teachers, support staff, yeah. administrators. It's been all hands on deck, and yeah. I think the school boards met and more had more emergency meetings um this year than my entire time on the board yes. um you know collective so with that i think that there's um ab obviously more to come uh but we are definitely trying to do the best as all of us are uh to make it a robust school year um learning yeah. rigorous learning environments and Same. uh we'll see where that goes but uh i think we'll probably have a different you know a, a, a more clear conversation for our December meeting, and uh, you can absolutely uh, talk more. It is. It is. Well, thank you for all you're doing for. Oh, the Jesus coming up. Good, good times. So. Yeah. And unfortunately, thank you. Any other thoughts or questions? Uh, and no lawn, huh? That's too bad. He was here, and he was having audio issues, and he yeah. was logged back in. So I don't know. It, it's hard. <laughs> I get it. Uh, any public? Anybody? I don't Call see anybody here. else here. Nope. 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 Any uh, comments from them? Nope. Any other comments from the committee? Yes. One quick one, if you don't mind. Sure. Michelle. Sure. Um, so Rick, you said baseball and wrestling registration are on hold for right now. Um, but what was the one registration that's now active? Um, lacrosse, lacrosse will be active shortly. Okay. And the two that are waiting are wrestling and basketball. Basketball, sorry, I put baseball. Thank you. You're welcome. Jill, you're awesome. Almost, I'm good. 
I miss all. I miss all of you. Thank you for being here tonight. Here's sure. A very cool talk. Here's yeah, a happy Thanksgiving talk. to you all. Yeah, yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm thankful for our Parks and Rec Department and Director. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Round of applause. DPW. We can all second that one. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Rick. That was a good note. And keep up the good work, everybody. Ugh, plodding along. <laughs> All right, I'm waiting. <laughs> two, yep. two notes. I'll quick. make a motion. Oh, make it, Tracy. It. Make it. I'll just, second it for two you. Two notes, real quick. Hold on. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> One. Um, now, my kids have been in school up until this point, and we're switching to remote next week. So, starting next week. Probably, you know, so far we're able to still maintain office coverage every day, right. but, uh, <laughs> you know, that may change. Um, we still have access to our, to, we have the ability to take our town phones home and get calls and make calls and everything from home. So you know, oh. we have a lot of foot traffic at this time of year anyway, but just so you know that we may not be in the office full time coming this winter. Yeah. Um, Okay. So That's we'll see how that goes. Um, and secondly, we will be meeting in December. Joy had to cancel at the last minute for tonight. Uh, okay. So we will have that Eagle Scout project to here in December. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think we need to do that. So that would be December 16th? Correct. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, so I, I one think. One more time? Go ahead. Go ahead. Tracy, okay. thank you. Make a motion. <laughs> I made Shannon, a motion. Shannon, Shannon okay. second. I'll second it. Yeah. And thank you, all of you. I really do appreciate it. Uh, all those in favor, yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you, everybody, for all yeah. that you do. And God bless you and your family this time awesome. of year. And happy yeah. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, everybody. Absolutely. Merrimack TV is committed to our community. From gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of town and school board meetings to updates on town services and projects, we aim to keep you connected. Uh, good morning, I'm Kyle Fox, Public Works Director for the Town of Merrimack. Hi, I'm Diane Trippett. I'm the Town Clerk Tax Collector for the Town of Merrimack. I'm Captain Matt Tarleton with the Merrimack New Hampshire Police Department. And keep the public informed of every motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And many moments, so you can be confident that we're here for you. Thanks for watching. Stay connected. Follow Merrimack TV on Facebook.